Hello folks, it's me the Black Dragon, National President of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, here at the Roundup, uh, sitting in my trailer in the air conditioning, it's been like 103 degrees out here, and we're having a blast. Um, waiting for a few minutes for the audience to build, and uh, we'll get into our uh, uh, broadcast here in a moment. Uh, wow, it says my connection is weak. Testing, testing, connection, connection. So, uh, waiting just a few moments for some folks to come on, and we can talk about uh, this kind of neat subject. And, you know, I get asked these questions uh, all the time. Folks are around me all the time, and uh, here at the Roundup is no uh, different. Uh, got a lot of questions here. So I have the pleasure of spending some time with the father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, Paul Pep Perry, the one who started the motorcycle club with the six other brothers, the original seven. Uh, they started the motorcycle club in San Diego, California, and um, there was just seven of them. And uh, that's the medallion of the, uh, of the father. And of course, he gave me one that, uh, this one is the original medallion, and this is the original chain from around his neck, and he gave me this uh, for, uh, uh, I mean, I just almost cry every time I get it. I never thought I'd get one of these, and of course, that one's his. And they started this motorcycle club, you know, uh, in 1972 they got together, uh, and all they had was a single motorcycle, uh, Honda 3, 305 Scrambler. 305 Scrambler. And they all got together and practiced on this 305 Scrambler. Uh, and over the next two years, everybody got their own motorcycles. And they eventually got their motorcycle clubhouse. And this is the last original remaining uh, member. Uh, there are three alive, but he's the only one that's still with the club. So that's he's eight. That stayed with the club, never left. Uh, and we're going on 43 Three. years, 43 years in February. So, uh, it brings to to uh, bear an interesting question, uh, because I got a lot of guys right now fighting with their founders. And um, the, uh, uh, oh, thick with it, the first lady from uh, Jacksonville, uh, Sister of the Cross, our Jacksonville chapter, says hello to you. Hey. Says she wished she could be here. We wish we could have you. Uh, so it's it's uh, interesting because we get a lot of questions from folks uh, and that that are fighting with their founders right now, and it brought to bear some interesting questions, uh, like what exactly does the founder own? And um, man, I've heard it all. So a founder got mad at his chapter uh, because they wanted to vote him out of being national president. And so he decided to take his name and take his um, goodies and go home. He's going to uh, he's going to take the name, take everybody to court, take the patches off their back. Everything is in his name, and if if uh, we can't play by my rules, we don't get to play at all. No rules. And uh, it, it's interesting to me because, <laughs> believe it or not the founder of the Black Sabbath Nation has actually been separated from the club put out a couple of times in his history and never did he ever do anything like that so he taught us of the Black Sabbath Nation what a founder is and it's just amazing that no matter how many times people have done some things to him, his character and sense of purpose have always brought him back into the nation as a leader of the nation and the father of the nation. And he's watched the nation and his children go up and down, back and forth, and he has never given up on them. So what is a founder? What does a founder really own? Uh, when I went to make the movie Biker Boys with... Uh, um, director Reggie Rock Bythewood 
He told me an interesting thing about making movies that I thought really directly correlated with being in a motorcycle club. He said, you know, John, you're a writer. And when you write a book, you own that book. You, you own how long the book is. You, loan, you own the characters. You own the story development. You own it all. It's your baby to write. However, when you write a movie, you only own the idea. You write about a character, and then another character, another person, plays that character. It's not like a book where you get to say everything the character is going to do. This this actor comes in and he goes and he does some research. Maybe the actor is going to be a plumber, so he goes and he does researches. And he finds out what plumbers wear. He finds out how plumbers talk. He finds out things about plumbers you may never have known. So he brings that into the movie and he portrays that. So the movie is no longer your story, but it's a story that's shared by every single person that's in the movie. And so you own a book, but we own the movie. It takes a cast to make a movie. It only takes a person to write a book. There's no cast. A motorcycle club is like a movie. When you put the idea down, founder, you own the idea, but we own the MC. The MC is owned by the voting members of the motorcycle club. We own it. You shared that with us, and now we will tell the story. So the colors may be in your name. You may have copyrighted them. You may have come up with it all and pioneered it all into existence. But when you called it an MC, that means the crowd, the MC, the group, all of us. It's not I, I, I. It's not my, my, my. It's not me, me, me. It's ours. It's us. It's them. It's we. And Pep used to always drill into my head, stop saying I, 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 and start saying we, we, we. So, you are not exempt from the vote, founder. You don't always get to be in charge. You might be removed from the national president position by vote or whatever. I really wouldn't worry about it because if you're good, you'll be back. You'll be around. These idiots often find uh, out that they can't do things do. or what you do. What you do. Or how you do it. Or how you handle it. You know, everybody's not a people person. You know, you got to listen to a lot of stories. You got to hear a lot, a lot of stories. Problems and issues. And make a, a lot of a decisions. A lot of decisions. So what does a founder own? A founder owns the vision. A founder owns the idea. A founder owns the construction, the development, the training, the leadership development. That's what a founder owns. A founder owns the esprit de corps. A founder owns the drive to make people come together and do the things that are going to make the MC great. And then that's about it. The founder does not own your ideas, does not own your opinions. The founder does not get to every vote. I don't like it. If it's not my way, it's the highway. The founder doesn't get to do that. Many founders do that because clubs are weak and they don't know their bylaws and they allow that to happen. But as a founder, you serve at the pleasure of the MC you founded. And another thing about founders and national presidents and great folks who do things it's very easy to conquer. Uh, I remember my former national VP, Hogman, once told me, Hey, uh, Alexander the Great, you can conquer a whole bunch of cities. But when it comes time to govern, you, not, you might not be the person to do the governing. It, it's easy to go beat up people in war and take over cities, but to provide garbage services, health, uh, 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 mail service, taxi pickup, that sort of thing, that requires a governor, and not everyone does that well. So just because you're a founder and you go out there and you kick booty and you make everything happen, that doesn't mean you're the person to do the administration. 
and to to pay the taxes and things like that. That might be another person who's good at administration. So um, think about that as you lead your motorcycle club nations to be and do great things. Think about and remember that MCs are ruled by the vote. And we. The we, the people who make up the MC. There is no MC with one person. You need you need a group. You need at least five. We, we. In most places. So I'm going to go back and party out here. Uh, I'm going to the stage, the dance, the, the uh, just having such great times here at the Roundup. This is like... Eee, doggy. Uh, most awesome place to be. Have mercy, you should be here. And I get to be with the founder hey. of the Black Sabbath Nation. Enjoy your founders, people. They are some hellacious folks. They've done some great things. And uh, when you find that you're at odds with your founder, remember one thing. You would like to be where he is. You, you, he is in a place you haven't made it to yet. And to do half the things these guys do, to go into cities and face outlaw motorcycle clubs and get permission and go through all the humps that they go through, they're in the place that they're in because they've worked hard to provide a vision that you can grab a hold of. So when you think about how bad they are and you talk behind their backs and you figure out all kind of ways to stab them and this, that, and the other, remember this. Most of us probably couldn't do one half of the damn things that our founders did. Even if we tried, they're great people. Love them. And founders, love your people. I love my kids. I love my kids. Hey, I love them. Wee, wee, wee. Wee, wee, wee. Thank you. Any questions? We have any questions out there? Let me see. Uh... Hey, it was good to see you. Hey, uh, it was good to see you, too. I, I went down there to see if you were down there. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you, Miko. So I went down there to see if you were down there. I didn't see you uh, about 10 minutes ago. So uh, I'm back up here. Come holler at me. Let's see. Uh, oh, no questions. Everything is cool. I think, uh, I think we did it. All right, so this is uh, this is the, the father's first uh, go-live. So... Hey y'all. Everybody let the father know he did good in his first go live. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I've never been called on the carpet before on the set. <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Take care y'all and love y'all.